Hey guys, it's time for a new top 10 list. And went to Facebook, asked around, see uh, what you guys wanted me to do for a new list. Um, kind of like the, the last one I did with like my top 10 favorite Zelda games. So, <clears throat> got a couple suggestions, uh, but the one that I really thought um, sounded pretty interesting was uh, top 10 most disappointing albums for me personally. <clears throat> um, so I thought about it for a while and uh, while I don't really have them in order, I do have a number one. So two, number two through ten is just kind of random order. You know, it doesn't really have um, one more than the other. But number one is definitely the most disappointing album for me. So, to start it off, I'm going to go with Seosin's In Search For or In Search Of Solid Ground. I don't remember which one it is, but it's the one that followed up their first full-length album with Cove. So it was Cove's second full-length album. And I loved the album previous to that. I mean, every song on that album was absolutely perfect. And I even saw him live for that tour. I met Cove. I thought that was cool. Um, but when this other one came out, even before this album came out, they had a really solid EP. They had, um, it was called the Grey EP. And they had, um, I don't remember exactly what the songs were called then, but I know they had uh, On My Own and uh, Keeping Secrets, um, which I'm pretty sure turned into I Keep My Secrets Safe. And um, Why Can't You See, I'm pretty sure. I think that was it. And I thought those songs were awesome. And when those songs made it onto the new album, I wasn't really surprised to see them on there. I mean, I was hoping for all new songs, um, but they ended up changing some of the things I liked in those songs a bit and that kind of rubbed me the wrong way and other than those couple songs the rest just didn't seem as good like I feel that a lot of the songs were really slow the lyrics were fucking really depressing and <clears throat> one thing that Cove does <clears throat> that I only noticed until somebody pointed out, but he will almost fill an entire song with him singing. Like, there's almost no section where he doesn't sing. And I feel like if, he, if you know, someone wants to, you know, do like a vocal cover of that song, it'll be pretty friggin' hard. And it showed in his live singing, like he was practically out of breath the whole time. Um, but, you know, that doesn't really have too much to do with this album that much, but... I don't know, the songs just were not as good as the previous album, and I was pretty bummed about it. Um, and there's definitely going to be a pattern like this sort of thing uh, for the whole list about how, you know, like a life-changing album for me, and then an album that just didn't live up. That's just kind of how a lot of this list is going to go. Uh, next one... So number nine is Thrice Major Minor. Pretty sure it's Major Minor, not Minor Major. I don't know. I I'm so unfamiliar with the album um, that I don't even remember. That being said, there was a couple songs that you know really hit home for me. Um, Yellow Belly was okay. I mean, none of the songs were bad. Let me let me just say that none of the songs were bad, but I just kept losing interest in Thrice with each album they came out with. Um, not to say that their first couple albums were my favorite, but I loved Artists in the Ambulance, I loved Visu, and then they came out with the Alchemy Index, which I thought was really cool, but I only really got into Fire and Water. I didn't really care for Air and Earth that much. And then I think it was Beggars after that one? And 
some of the songs on that album I really liked, but a couple of them I just couldn't really get into. And I might be forgetting an album, I'm not sure. But anyway, when this one came out, it just it didn't really connect with me. And their style just kept changing, and they were getting kind of folky almost. And they were almost like not rock or not heavy at all. And, you know, I get it. People change, but... I don't know. I was still so big into that Artist in the Ambulance and Visu sort of sound that when this album came out, I was just like, I don't get it. You know, it just didn't really do it for me. Um, I can see why people would like it. I mean, it's still good music, but it's not the thrice that I love. You know, it's not the thrice that I wanted to hear. And frankly, I don't know if it's ever the thrice I really want it, want to hear. Um, that being said, some of Dustin Kenzer's uh, solo work is cool. I mean, I don't really love a lot of just the music itself, but I mean, his singing and his lyrics are incredible. So, I mean, if I kind of was in that mood, that mindset, then I could probably listen to Major Minor. But, I mean, if I'm thinking, if I'm just thinking of Thrice, I'm not thinking of that album. And I don't even have that on my iPod or anything like that. I just don't really listen to it. Number eight is Gravedigger, which is a band I know a lot of you aren't going to know, but I've done some cover, some uh, guitar covers of them, you know, over the past ten years or whatever, and they're one of my favorite heavy metal bands. And this album is The Clans Will Rise Again. And here's a brief history of Gravedigger. Uh, 1984, they came out with a couple albums through the 80s. Um, they changed their name to Digger and came out with another album. It was a huge flop and they had tried something like more poppy almost. And they called it quits, came back in 92, I think, 92, 93, somewhere around there, uh, <clears throat> with the guitar player that was also in Digger, um, so they came back as Grave Digger, and then that guitar player, who's one of my favorite guitar players of all time, his name is Uwe Lewis, and he was in the band until 1999, and then another guitar player came in, who, you know, I liked, he was not a bad guitar player at all, he's incredible, but, you know, I didn't think he was as good as Uwe, at least for style-wise, so then... It goes, he was in the band for, boy, I don't even know, um, almost 20 years. No, that doesn't make sense. Uh, like eight or nine years. Yeah, because it's not the year 2020 right now. So yeah, he was in the band from about year 2000 to like 2008, 2009, somewhere around there. And then they got this new guitar player that... I don't know, I just don't get him. I don't like his style for the band, and I don't like his riffs. And I've been listening to this band since I was like six years old, in the mid 90s, and you know, it's a band I'm used to, and it's just, it it just didn't fit right for me. So this album, The Clans Will Rise Again, was his first album, and he's not a bad guitar player at all, but I just don't like his style, and it just completely killed grave digger for me you know i can't even listen to them with with this new guitar player i mean i still absolutely love their older stuff but i just have no interest in their newer work the guitar player uh his riffs seem kind of sloppy sometimes and he way overdoes the uh the pinch harmonics you know like the metal squealy sort of guitar things for you non-guitar people he way overdoes those and they don't even sound good either like there's some guitar players that can really do those amazingly but he can't um, and I don't know it just it bummed me out big time because the album before that one um, they had you know that that other guitar player that I liked um, and they actually had a second guitar player um, who really brought a lot to the band. I, I thought that album was really different, but it was awesome. And then it went to this one, and I'm just like, what the hell is this? And 
I don't know, it just bummed me out. So, number seven is Hammerfall, which is another metal band. Uh, this one actually from Sweden, and it's their album No Sacrifice, No Victory. And it's pretty much the same situation where one of my favorite guitar players in this uh, example is uh, Stefan Elmgren, or Stefan Elmgren, and um, he ended up leaving the band uh, because he wanted to actually become a pilot. And since then, you know, he's come back a couple times and done like some guest work with them live and stuff, but what had happened was they got a new guitar player and granted this one that left wasn't the main songwriter it was the other guitar player so they had two guitar players and they decided to try just a newer kind of style and it just didn't work for me and you know some of their earlier work was really fast and really melodic but this sort of stuff was just kind of clunky to me some of the songs i will say were amazing i mean there was an instrumental song that was awesome and one of the tracks i think it might have even been the last track on the album called one of a kind was awesome I, I thought that was a really great song but the album as a whole just was nowhere near as good as it had been for that band so i was i was pretty bummed when i heard that one number six is Alkaline Trio's This Addiction. Uh, I'd been listening to them since like 2003, I think. Uh, so right around when Good Morning came out. And, you know, I, I really love Good Morning. And then Crimson came out. I thought Crimson was fucking awesome. You know, I still listen to that album all the time. And then Agony and Irony came out, and I was like, okay, you know, I like a good amount of these songs, but it didn't really do much for me right away. Since then, I've gotten to like the album a lot more. There's a lot of songs in there that just took a little bit of time to get into. But This Addiction came out, and even as of right now, I don't think there's like a single song on that album that I like. One second. I'm actually going to iTunes real quick just to double check. Um, for for this addiction, oh, you know what song I really really like is "Fine." It's the last song on the album, unless there's bonus tracks, which there probably is. But that's mainly a song from, uh, or it was sang by Dan, and I thought that song was fucking awesome. "Eating Me Alive" was okay. You know, I do like synthy stuff. Draculina, I didn't really think was that great. Dying Die, My Darling's okay. This Addiction's okay. But, you know, each one, each other one, you know, didn't really strike a chord with me. Um, thank God My Shame is True came out because that is an amazing album. But maybe I'll have to do a top 10 redeeming albums or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, This Addiction, you know, it's not a bad album, but it's probably, I don't know, I don't think it's nearly as good as any of their other stuff. Let's see, we're on number six, I think? No, number five. And this one is Reggie and the Full Effects, Last Stop, Crappy Town. So let me give you sort of a uh, background on this one. Reggie and the Full Effect is basically just this guy named James Dewey's, and he used to do, and still kind of does, um, synth for the band The Get Up Kids. And they broke up, and I don't know if he was doing it at the same time, but he started doing his own solo project, which was mostly synth sort of stuff, but there were some guitars, you know, uh, fake drums. I don't even know if he even ever used real drums, but whatever, it still sounded fine. And he even started doing some stuff with My Chemical Romance. He went on tour with them uh, for the Black Parade, I'm pretty sure it was when he went in. And he did like all their piano slash synth stuff from then for a couple years. So Reggie kind of took a backseat for a while. 
and he he was under contract from some label and he wrote this album gave it to him and they're like this sucks you need to make a new one so that one was completely scrapped and then he wrote last stop crappy town and i just could not get into it for one thing a lot of the song titles are really similar i'm actually gonna look it up right now because i don't even remember them but it made it really confusing let me see so on the cover of the album is a train or yeah a train i guess um and what he tried to do was kind of make it like make the song titles like different trains and uh and different streets so one of them first track is is called g just the letter g uh track two is smith and ninth street obviously three is f four is e five is third ave six is l then j v lorimer street r 36th street and n how the hell is anyone going to remember those titles? I mean, that, that pissed me off so bad. I'm like, I don't even know which song is which, and I just can't remember. Um, so, that being said, the songs themselves were not very good. Um, and it actually looks like the ones that are called, like, whatever street, like 3rd Ave, Lorimer Street. Uh, those ones are pretty much just, like, really, really short songs, and I don't even remember what they are. But it was just a really depressing album. I mean, granted, some of his other stuff was pretty depressing, too. But, um, you know, he at least put his own spin on it. And, and this was just, like, really low. And I don't know. Thankfully, the album that came after this, even though it took a long time for it to come out, was a lot better. Um, yeah, it must have been, like, five or six years after this album. But this one was just really dark, and it just didn't sound very good, and I don't know. He was probably just really pissed that the other one got tanked, or the other one got, you know, shut down, and nobody wanted it, so I don't know. This one is number four, and this is Green Day's 21st Century Breakdown. I'm sure most of you saw this coming. Maybe not. I don't know. At the time of release, I thought American Idiot was awesome, but I really, really ran that into the ground, and I can only really listen to the stuff that w wasn't a single. So like, uh, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, I can't listen to that. I can't listen to Wake Me Up When September Ends. I can't listen to the title track or Holiday. Um, but after this new album finally came out, you know, I knew people were gonna want new covers and new lesson videos and stuff like that and I obliged you know I did a good amount of covers from this album and it actually got me a shitload of views at the time like within a month I had like 20,000 views on like each video and I thought it was crazy so I'm like okay you know I don't love the songs but I'll, I'll come out with you know some more covers and stuff and one of them actually got me, and, well, got my YouTube account at the time, which was Little Red Guitars 1, not Little Red Guitars 2. But it got it suspended, and I lost everything I had on there. And it was a huge bummer. And so that did not leave a good taste in my mouth with that album to start with. Um... So, I mean, even even though that happened, I never really connected with the songs. I thought 21 Guns was a fucking terrible song. Um, honestly, I don't even remember half the songs. That's how forgettable they were to me. And it just... It didn't even live up to American Idiot. I mean, it, they just kept going with like the political bullshit, and it's just like, I don't care anymore, you know? Um, you know, some of the songs weren't weren't really political, but, you know, anytime a band really gets like that, it just bugs the shit out of me. So. 
Anyway. Next album is the th- number three, and this is Jimmy Eat World's Chase This Light. Another one where the previous album was just fucking sweet. I loved it. And that was Futures. And actually, I'm going to double check the album timeline. I'm pretty sure that was the one right before it. Because I, I loved Futures. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Come on. Come on. Apparently, I'm, I'm just not meant to know. The computer doesn't care. Anyway, there was a bit of edge to Futures, you know. I mean, they're not like the edgiest band in the world, but, you know, they still had a bit of grit to them. You know, like, I loved Futures, I loved Just Tonight, Pain. Uh, those sort of songs that had, you know, a, a real rock influence to them. Granted, I loved some of the slower songs like 23 and Polaris, and um, I just feel like they kind of got a little softer with this album. And, you know, I get it, you know, it happens, like it kind of happened with Thrice, and while they're not bad songs like there's a couple songs on there that you know i absolutely love um let me double check oh my god my computer's so slow um but it did not do the same impact that futures did futures is still one of my all-time favorite albums and this one just didn't really do it for me so i don't know Oh, it's finally going now. Let's see. Yeah, so Futures was 2004, and then Chase the Slate was 2007. The only thing I, you know, I really remember when it came out was uh, Big Casino, I think was the name. Yeah, I didn't really think that song was all that great. Uh, Chase the Slate, I didn't really think was all that great. But you know what? Always Be is an awesome song. I really, really like that one. And honestly, a lot of the other ones, I don't even really remember that much. And I'm looking at like the review scores from like different different websites. Absolute Punk actually rated it really high, almost 90%. But a lot of the other ones were just kind of middle of the road, like 5 out of 10, 3 out of 5 sort of thing. So I mean, it I feel like they're kind of agreeing with me where, like, it's fine, you know, it's not a bad album, but, you know, it's not that amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, now I'm looking at the scores for Futures right now. 94%, 4, four out of 5, 4 out of 5, 4 out of 5, 8 out of 10, B minus, 4 out of 5, 4.5 out of 5. Rolling Stone gave it a 3.5. Well, fuck them. What does Rolling Stone know? Um, so anyway, Futures is just the fucking shit. Alright, enough about Jimmy E. World. Let's go to number two. And it was kind of a toss-up between number one and two, but I gotta give this one to some 41's Underclass Hero. Um, a, a lot of you, I've already seen my review for Underclass Hero, so you probably don't have to really hear what I have to say Um, but you know All Killer No Filler great album Does This Look Infected fucking changed my life Uh, especially guitar wise and I loved how like edgy they were getting and like how metal influenced they could really be and then Chuck came out and I really liked that album a lot not as much as Does This Look Infected but I thought it was great that they were keeping up with the heavy tones and heavier songs and then fucking Dave left, and I was so bummed because that guy shreds, and he clearly brings so many great things to that band. And then Derek promises that Underclass Hero is going to be back to their heyday with all, uh, all killer no filler sort of sounds. And I put on this album for the first time, and granted, I was pretty young when it came out. Um, I, was still, I think I was still in high school 
Let me, let me see when this came out. I think it was like 2006 or something. It's 2007, so yeah, I was uh, I was almost a senior in high school, and uh, it's just not that good, you know. Like I said in my review, um, there's a lot of repetition in the album. There's a lot of songs that just are stupid, like the Ma Poo Bell song. I didn't really care for that. And the guitars sounded like crap. The guitar playing itself was very simple. Not really anything interesting to play on guitar, you know, for a guy who likes to cover songs and stuff. It really didn't do much for me. And I don't know. It's a far cry from Chuck and Does It Suck Infected and those. But, I mean, that being said, I don't think it's the worst album I've ever heard by a long shot, but compared to the other ones, it's not that good. So, that brings us to number one. And give yourself a second. See if you can figure it out while I look up a... Uh, a set list for this one. <clears throat> Figured it out yet? Anything? It's pretty recent. You got this. I think you got it. <clears throat> think you got it yet? Alright, time's up. I'm sick of waiting for you. <clears throat> it is... Newfound Glory's Resurrection. God, this fucking album disappointed the absolute shit out of me. I'm still fucking bummed about this album. And the thing that I just that blows me away is the fact that so many people love this album. I don't get it. You know, I've been listening to Newfound Glory since like 2002, I think, and safe to say I love a lot of their stuff. I even loved Coming Home probably more than most Newfound Glory fans did. And this one came out right after Steve Klein was kicked out of the band for his fucking pedophile accusations from his ex-wife and God only knows what happened with that. <clears throat> but he was a huge part of that band if you don't already know. He did a lot of the lyrics and I like I mentioned before when I when I did a review of this album is I feel like he had a lot to do with the way that Jordan sang and like his just his style in general I feel like he really had certain things in mind he didn't just hand Jordan some lyrics and say here you go you know and <clears throat> while Chad did most or if not all of the music you know, Steve still added guitar to it. You know, he added his own flavor to it. And I feel like that really showed in this album because it's definitely more straightforward. It doesn't sound as pop punk. It sounds a little closer to punk. I mean, it's still a fucking far cry from real punk music. Everybody can probably figure that out. But they lost some of their poppiness. Um, <clears throat> I don't like Jordan's lyrics or whoever's writing the lyrics now I don't like how he rushes a lot of the lyrics I feel like sometimes he's really just trying to cram as many words into a certain spot to make it work and it just comes off just really rushed and you know just kind of jumbled and I don't like it um, a lot of the guitar riffs are fucking terrible um <clears throat> I don't even honestly know if I can remember which ones I'm thinking of specifically. Um, stories of a different kind. I fucking hate the chorus. I think the chorus is terrible, which is kind of what I was talking about with uh, him putting too many words into like a short spot. Uh, One More Round was okay. I didn't mind that song. Selfless was okay. Um, but... I don't know, the album just, <clears throat> it didn't make sense to me. And a lot of the songs just sounded like any 
band in the genre could have made them you know i feel like they just didn't sound like newfound glory anymore and a lot of the songs sound you know kind of like you know wonder years and story so far not so much story so far but you know it sounded like any other pop punk band or any other band that was at warp tour that year could have written any of those songs and it just felt like it wasn't newfound glory anymore and i really hope the next album's better because if it's another album that just doesn't do it for me then honestly i don't know if i'll even really follow the guys anymore because it just it i don't know it just sucks used to be really into them and this album just doesn't do it for me anymore so I'm hoping the next album kind of turns it around. A lot of bands have done that for me, um, but not all of them. So I'll definitely, you know, keep checking them out. But I don't know. Fingers crossed, I guess. I do want to say kind of a uh, runner-up that didn't make the list would be Yellow Card. Not really any specific album, but the newest, I guess the newest one, Lift a Sail. I mean, it wasn't that great. And I don't know. I mean, granted, since papers, paper walls came out, I almost said paper sales. Paper, uh, paper walls came out. I liked that album a lot. Not right when it came out, but when I, you know, gave him a chance again because I hated lights and sounds. But paper walls was good. Um, the hell came after that one. I think it was when you're through thinking. Say yes. That one was good. And then there was another one, I'm pretty sure, because they came out with a few albums, like, one right after another. Come on. Come on. Yeah, it was, um, God, what the hell was it? Uh, Southern Air, that's what it was. I really liked Southern Air a lot. But at the same time, I don't know, I was just kind of losing interest in, in Yellow Card, you know. Even if this new album was good, I don't know if I'd really be into it that much, you know. Just because I feel like my kind of interest in Yellow Card has just kind of fallen a little bit. So, I don't know, maybe they'll come out with a fucking awesome album in a couple years. But I'm not holding my breath. Um, but we'll see. Anyway, I've been talking more than long enough, so let me know what you guys think of the, the list, and uh, yeah, let's talk about it. Leave me a comment. I'll talk to you later.